Welcome to the Folklorama at Home, the virtual experience brought to you by the Manitoba Government Safe at Home program. My name is Tanya and I'll be your tour guide as we check out cultures from around the world, including some in our own backyard. If you would like to chat with us during this experience, feel free to do so in the chat bar. Otherwise, grab your passport, sit back, relax, as today we head to Trinidad and Tobago with our friend, Mr. Clyde. Hello, Mr. Clyde. How, How are you, you doing? Hello. I am so good. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good, yeah. Now, because we can't travel to the Caribbean islands right now, you are our vessel there. Yeah, <laughs> we're transported from there to here. So. Exactly. So yep. tell us all about you. Where did you come from? How did you get to be in this nice warm country? Yeah, actually, I'm originally from Trinidad and Tobago, the two last islands at the tip of uh, South America, eight miles off the north coast of Venezuela. I came to this country way back in the 60s, mid-60s. Oh, okay. So basically this is my country more so than Trinidad and Tobago. And what brought so you to Canada? Yeah, well, I had a brother here and he was uh, quite into uh, education and stuff, so he thought it would be a good thing for me to sort of get myself out of Trinidad and come here and further my studies and that. That's fantastic. So now you are a steel drum master. Can I call you that? Well, you no. Could, yeah, I guess. Pretty good. You're pretty <laughs> yeah. good at it. So how did you get involved with the steel drums? Well, actually, um, way back in time, back in Trinidad, actually, the steel drums were um, like a taboo thing, and you were not really? supposed to be around it. But then it has transitioned from then into schools now. So you got uh, little kids, six, seven years old, who could play me under the table on the table because they're so good. Yeah. So it's, and it is the national instrument of Trinidad and Tobago. Wow. And it is also international, but it's not marketed in a r regular marketing way. And how did you begin to play them? Well, when, you, when you're when you told you're not supposed to do something, <laughs> that's how it all started. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And did you teach yourself or did you have a teacher? Yeah, actually all my musical career I've taught myself, yeah. Really? And I do play all the other instruments. That's amazing. And how many different versions of the steel drum are there? Well, in a, in a full steel band you would have like about six to eight sections. Wow. It's, it's just like a regular symphony. We got the, the the melodies and the cellos and the bass and the stuff like that. So, so it's set up in in the same way. Now I've seen you perform often in Folklorama. You've been with uh, our family for, I think you know since you were ten, because now you're twenty six. So many many years. Um, what? Uh, why do you love doing what you do? Well, um, when I first came here, actually, I it was a way of sort of passing time, apart, apart from studying. Of course. So, um, like the, the other guys from, from Trinidad also, on Sundays we'd get together and just uh, jam around. By that time we didn't have any, any instruments. So they used to just use the kitchen utensils, the pots and stuff, and you know. Wow. And there was a box guitar, acoustic guitar lying around. I knew a couple of chords, so, you know. We had sort of a jam session there, and then it sort of grew and grew and grew. And, and where are the steel drums from? Originally from Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. Back in the mid 40s, uh, when the guys were out supporting the war course through England, right. and those who were left back, they used to, uh, on the evenings, gather around, you know, just to shoot the breeze, talk about the day's events. And uh, that's where the Calypso came from. They would make up talk about each other, make fun of each other, and then they broke it into melodies. Oh. But they didn't have no support and equipment right. or instruments, so they picked up anything. And we used to get uh, salted biscuits from England that came to take about four months from England on the boats, ships, and they came in barrels. And when the barrel, when the biscuits were finished, they discarded the barrels. So on one of these evenings, a guy named Spree uh, was on the way to meet the congregation you know, to pass the evening, and they couldn't find something. And in the distance was a barrel. So he picked it up, put it on his shoulder, tapped it, and made a sound. Then for some unknown reason, spun it around, tapped it, but he, he got a different sound. Oh. 
So he was a bit musical, so he thought maybe if he went home, he didn't say anything to anybody and he experimented with it. And the idea was to separate the sounds. So he found a way to separate the sounds and that was the birth of the steel drums. The only transition was from the biscuit drum to the oil drum. Okay, and what was the difference? The difference was the oil drum was made of steel oh. and the biscuit drum made with a, a sort of an inferior material. Oh, okay. So the sound is entirely different. That's amazing. And what are you going to teach us today? Well, I could teach you a couple of, couple of tunes on the steel drum there. I am excited. Okay. I have watched you perform for years at the pavilions, and I've, of course, seen you at many of the different Folklorama events that we've had, and you've yeah. wowed everyone. So maybe let's get started. Sure. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, Claude, I am so excited. We have these beautiful steel drums. Now, what is the difference between each of them? Okay, this set here is called the alto or second pans, and they are used as the rhythm to the melody, which is all for this one, which is the tenor or soprano. Okay. It displays the melody and it supports the melody. Just like a rhythm guitar, and you sing. Right. And you play the chords, so you'll be playing the chords. Ooh, I'm excited, and I so, hope I don't mess this up. Um, yeah. At the front, now everyone always usually sees the front, but this cool shot behind us, we get to see what's actually inside, and, and how does one figure out which note is which? Yeah, and, and this set, like my lowest note, like each section is a note. Like when they made the steel drums, remember I, uh, mentioned they had to find a way to separate the songs. Right. So they found that way by a thing called grooving. Oh. So actually to make a steel drum, they go through about nine manual steps from a barrel to a finished instrument. Okay. And the grooving is here, and within the grooving is the note. Now are these hand done when they're made? No. no. This, okay. this is, and it's all done manually nothing computerized. Wow. So they go through, get a drum. I'll quickly tell you how they make it out. Please, please. Yeah. Okay, so they get a drum and they will use the bottom part of the drum, not the top part, because the top part has the two holes filling the oil. So they use the bottom. And then they take a big sledgehammer and sink it down about eight inches. After it's done, they cut it to the required length. This is called a skirt. Okay. And in this case, the skirt is this length. And the tenors, it's a little shorter. And in a full steel band, the base actually uses the whole barrel. Wow. The entire barrel. So as you go deep into a steel, steel band, the notes get bigger, but then you have more drums. So the guy who's playing the bass, a simple bass would be like a six bass. And on the bass, you would have three notes on each. So that'd be a total of 80 notes. Okay, and how many okay. notes are in here? This set has 30 notes. So it's- 30? Yeah, two and a half. Wow. Hours. Yeah, yeah. So I start out with a low F and go up to a high B. Okay. So I have low F, mid F, and high F. Wow. Okay. Do you and, ever have uh, to tune them? Yes. Oh, okay, like how, all, how would you do that? All these little marks here, Actually, I have a, a plastic hammer in my bag. I usually touch it up myself. Okay. Because once I was doing like a present- Literally hammer? Yeah. I was doing a presentation in a school and I told the kids, touch the drum. And this particular girl, I don't know what she was thinking, but she whacked it so hard, my note almost fell off. Oh no. So then I had to go tune it back. So, so you just tap it gently and you could hear, just like when you turn the uh, keys on a guitar, guitar for the three yeah. the notes changing. Wow. So, and then you, that's it. But one of the things in making the steel drum, what gives it the sound, it's heat. It, the, the steel drum is burnt for us. Okay. And that's so. gives it the musical sound. And how do they heat it? They just build a bonfire and throw it on it. Wow. And burn it. But, they cannot throw water on it to cool it off. It has to cool off by itself, back to room temperature. Because okay. you know what happens if you throw water on steel? No. It freezes, it seizes it up. So then at that point, it will become a garbage can. Okay. So, 
So after it's uh, warm, come back to room temperature, then they proceed to tune it. So the first set of tuning, they just sort of bring it in tune because to protect it and give it this finish, they take it to the chrome factory and it's dipped into chrome. Wow. So the chrome is over 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So that expands the metal and then it goes out of tune. Okay. So then it, that's where the plastic armor comes in and it just on, um, bring it back into them. And nowadays they actually tune them to uh, like different tuning instruments like strobe lights and stuff like that. Wow. And uh, to get the real sound. And this set is actually over 20 years old and it sounds like it was just made yesterday. How long do they usually last for? Which, since they start chroming them, they last very long. As I said, this one is about 20 years, 20 years old. old. Yeah, yeah, both of them. Actually, they were made at the same time. Oh, wow. That's and incredible. they were made in Winnipeg. <laughs> in Winnipeg? Yeah. Is there a factory in Winnipeg? That no, makes no, 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 no. Okay. A guy was you passing never know. through. So, yeah. <laughs> it's Winnipeg. You never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and they're very, very difficult to find, actually, even in Trinidad and Tobago. Really? And they're very expensive. So. Okay. Yeah. So what are these things, too? These are called, we call them sticks. And you guys refer to them as mallets. So in order for it to work, you have to use sticks. And the tip of the sticks, they have surgical rubber. We used to use the inner tube of a bicycle, but oh. the red tube, not the black tube. Okay. The black tube had a tapping sound. The red didn't. But then they got a little more technical, and they started to use surgical tubing. Okay. So and the tube, it, it doesn't unravel, and it doesn't wear away. So, but you need it to get the sound. Now, if you don't have it and use the bare stick, then you'll get a headache for sure. So, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, so that's what. It, and one of the things with the steel drums again is basically, basically uh, an outdoor instrument. So, like for carnival time, you go down to the islands, you will hear music in every below every tree. So they practice out in the yards and stuff wow. because it's it is so loud. Yeah. And a steel band, like a, they have different categories, like a large, medium, small. So a large steel band would have like a hundred players. A hundred players. Yeah. Wow. And you'd have like uh, twenty players playing a set of this. Right. That's and amazing. They'd be all playing the same thing. And then you'd have another. Does everybody thing. have to be the same tune though? Well, right, when you're all playing together, or does that make it make it musical and magical? Well, well what it is is uh, it, the music is arranged. It's arranged just like in a symphony. Okay. So you have the melody, and then they have um, counter melody chords and different things. So this would have a particular arrangement to do with that particular song. You know, and you could you could use any kind of song, you know, top forty song or calypso, soca as we call it, and uh, that's. Big around carnival time. I bet. I which bet is, is a big celebration in Trinidad. Will you play a song for us later? Yes, I Okay, will. Yeah. wonderful. So teach me how to play the steel pan drums. This is so cool. Yeah, okay, so I'll give you a couple of chords here. We try a little bit of stir it up. Okay. And we'll see if uh, oh, stir it up Tanya then. could actually stir it up. Can I stir it up? <laughs> Make so. a great record. So she'll be playing the chords and I'll play the melody. Tanya will attempt to play the chords so and he think will play the melody. handle that there, Okay, Tanya. I think so. Okay. Do you want me to try it? Yeah. Okay.
Ginger. <laughs> Thank wow. You very much. So I, the sound that comes out is just beautiful. Is it just because of the drum and it's like raised from the bottom, or? Well, uh, it, it's a type of instrument where you could actually tune into it or tune out of it. Okay. Like it's not in your face. Right. You know what I mean? It has a mellow sound. And as I say, in a full steel band, you know, with, with a whole bunch of them playing, you get a real, you know, solid sound. I bet. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's actually, when they started out with it, it had to do with carnival. Oh, really? And carnival was a, uh, two days before Ash Wednesday. Okay. Like, we were basically Catholic in the Caribbean there. Uh, they had this big carnival festival, which was wearing costume and street, street dancing. So they used to dance to the sound of the steel drums. And I guess these must have been on wheels or something, because I can't imagine carrying well, them. Well, no. Them. Back oh. then, when they started off, they used to have a strap, and it used to be around oh. your neck. Okay. So the fellas were playing. They used to only play one bass at that time, and that would be like a big barrel. So he, at the end of the day, he would be real tired. I bet he would be. It's a good workout. Well, but, but it's all changed since then to now. Yeah. Like they're on floats and they get pulled and that's, yeah. you know what I mean. That's beautiful. Would you do us the honor of playing us a song and I'll go pour myself a drink? Sure. Go ahead. Okay.
Euclid sort of Barbados now. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your amazing talent with us. I don't know about you all, but I feel like I have gone down to the islands, I have relaxed, and I have gotten some sun. So thank you so much for joining us. Now you need a rum. Now I need a rum. <laughs> this is true. That's a whole other episode. Yeah, it was a pleasure for me to be here today. So. Thank you so much. We appreciate your talents and, and teaching us. Thank you very much. And for not kicking me out of the band. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us tonight. It was great to have you. Stay tuned to all of our channels for the Folklorama at Home, the virtual experience, to find out what's happening next at folklorama.ca. Have a great night.